Welcome to this new video. Today I'll show you what unit tests are and how they work in a Python environment. So, what are unit tests? They are pieces of code useful to know if a function or method conform to specific requirements, that is, to know if they work as expected. Given a specific input, a specific output must result. If the output is the expected one, the tests pass. In the opposite case, the tests fail and the coder is notified with an error message. Another consequence of unit tests is that they are useful for tracking changes in the codebase. If something in the code changes and, for example, a new bug is introduced, the coder is notified when running the tests. There are various steps to set up unit tests. First of all, you must create a function that is testable. Avoid long and obscure functions. Second, you must think of the edge cases the function might receive as input and write tests for it. You can then write normal test cases and finally run the tests. Now we'll look at Python unit tests specifically. The simplest thing to do is to create a separate Python file in the root directory of a project. In the testpy file, you need to import the unit test module and create new classes inherited from unit test test case. To keep things simple, make its class corresponding to an implemented module. If we take as example the test API class, we see some methods inside it. Each one of these methods starts with test underscore and must correspond to a function to test. Inside each method, you can create different test cases. Personally, I prefer starting from the extreme ones. For example, if I need to test something string related, I start with empty strings. If I need to test something with indices, strings, arrays, dicts, etc., I start with underflows, overflows, first indices, and last indices cases. After writing these, I treat the normal cases. To be effective, these unit tests need to cover all possible cases. Let's see this example of a function that behaves similarly to C's str cmp. To say this in a few words, this function counts the number of different characters between two input strings. Feel free to pause the video to check what it does in detail. We now see the unit test for this function. As you can see, the first three cases are the edge or extreme cases. For example, if we pass two empty strings, we expect no differing characters, so the function must return zero. We can check this property with the assert equal method. Another case is when one of the two strings is empty. The number of differing characters corresponds to the length of the other string, which is one in this case. We then check differences between very long strings. Finally, we have a couple of normal cases. Once you've written the test, you can run them with this command and appreciate the result. What if we change the last test by asserting 1 instead of 0? The tests don't pass and an exception is raised. Let's see a real example now. This is a short function, part of the mdtalk project. The function is called replace substring. As you can imagine from the function name, the purpose of this function is to replace a string between two indices but with a peculiarity. Let's see an example for this. A string of length 1, a, is the replacement string between the two indices of 4 and 8. Here you can see the unit test starting from the edge cases. In the second part you see the peculiar and normal test cases. The majority of the test methods I used in mdtalk are assert equal, assert true, and assert raises. And finally, we must test if the assertions are raised when incorrect input is passed to the function. For convenience, to run the tests, and to do lots of other operations, I use a makefile. Just to put things in perspective, here are the lines of code of MDTalk compared to its unit tests. 
As you can see, the majority of lines of code in MDTalk are made up of the unit tests alone. That's it for this video. If you want to learn more about Python, like and subscribe. Bye bye.